Okay, next, next, uh, Jose Castillo, uh, architect, uh, academician, thinker, philosopher from Mexico City. So I'm going to structure the presentation in two, two sections. I will talk briefly about Mexico City, but I'd like to start with this image because this is something that we've heard of over the past couple of days. And this, what I feel is uh, the sense of guilt of the architect and the sense of guilt of the urban manager. These are two emblematic images of how the urban manager was represented by, uh, by Robert Moses or the hand of the creative architect as represented by, uh, by Le Corbusier, how can we relate that to the whole notion of the, uh, the problematic term of retrofitting? What does it mean for cities such as Istanbul or Mexico City for that matter to have to urbanize post de facto? Mexico City, similar to many other develop, uh, cities in the developing country, uh, is, uh, operates in a country which is mostly urban. 53% live in metropolitan areas, 76% live in urban areas. And of course, the, primacy, the, uh, the sensation of primacy, both at economic level, but at the population level in Mexico, is very much evident. In a sense, when we talk about Mexico City, we have to distinguish what happens in other cities. Mexico City is, is taking place outside Mexico City. Uh, the jurisdictional borders of the federal district now hold less than 50% of the population. And most of the growth, most of the issues, most of the problems are taking place there. To acknowledge that through policy, through plans, through actions, is quite relevant. I'd like to say some facts about the economics and the recent situation. Uh, if we look at, uh, at Mexico City with regards to the country, of course, it's, it's always better off. It's no, it's no brainer. But when we look at the way that the current crisis has hit Mexico City, then we might find some clues to the, to the issues. As you may know, Mexico City is, the, Mexico is going to uh, be contracted by 9% uh, from what we estimate in 2009 in, in economic terms. In, just in the city, more close to 9,000 business have been closed. And it seems that there's no real response to, to address these issues, even less so the, with urban, uh, through urban issues. Uh, more than 100,000 units of housing built just by the formal sector alone, and another 100,000 units built by the informal sector, not unlike uh, what happens here in Istanbul. A very high uh, rate of motorization, close to 400 cars per 1,000 people, 100,000 taxi cabs, out of which a quarter of them are illegal, and more than uh, 25,000 informal vendors. Big issue in Mexico City, security. I was just checking the numbers. In the Iraq uh, war, in the past seven years, there's been a little bit more than 4,000 casualties. In the war on drugs of the past three years, there's been more than 3,800 uh, people killed. How is that affecting not only uh, what Sophie Bodig and Dog would call the talk of fear, but also the, the, the perception of crime. And how is that affecting how are architects and planners dealing with this situation? 13% of those uh, crimes are taking place in the metropolitan area. And this is uh, some of the responses, not to the, the, the war on drugs, but certainly to the talk of fear. This kind of gated communities, this being the most extreme, which we visited in the Urban Age Mexico City Conference a few years back, in which exclusion becomes a geography. But this is not only happening at the, at the rich enclaves, it's actually happening at the poorest of the enclaves, in which the sensation of fear is driving development. This is translated, when was the last time that you let her out to play? Uh, and, the, and obviously the response to this, to this lack of urbanity is a gated community. Uh, Another issue which has to do with the event, the recent swine flu or human influenza, to be politically correct, which uh, taking into account that tourists represents the third most important source of income for the country as a whole, it literally uh, confirmed what some people call the black swan theory. Everything, ha everything that could go wrong uh, has gone wrong in, in Mexico and Mexico City in the past few months. To, to add up to the, to the complexities, we have a system of fragmentation party politics out of which the president 
uh, from the center-right party, the mayor from the left-wing party, and the, uh, the governor of Mexico, uh, which, which uh, barely talk to each other. And uh, they have no uh, really, or they have very limited relationship when it comes to planning decisions. It is very important to say that the two gentlemen on the right, center and right, represent the two most important, uh, relevant, uh, uh, the dominant candidates to become the next president in the election. So again, uh, city power becomes uh, federal power. Uh, in spite of that, or maybe because of, uh, precisely because of that, it seems that uh, civil society, and we should take that term with a, a sort of a quote unquote, has gotten rid of party politics as such. In the last uh, midterm elections of July, uh, there was over 10% of the people who declared their null vote. Four months after that, this idea that one out of 10 people are, are sick and tired of the system as a whole has not translated into either a more engaging model of decision making or a more engaging model of city planning for that matter. It has nevertheless uh, been re reflected in people taking the streets. Again, uh, this is one of the marches against security. Four million pe uh, people taking the streets uh, a few months ago. Or even to the micro protests where you have uh, small interest groups beginning to address the, the feeling that citizens are always outside of these planning and policy decisions. To add up to the equation, this is just last week, major flooding, a, a big failing infrastructure, a lack of uh, investment in infrastructure prior to the current mayor uh, that for 10 years left the, the city's water system to a total disarray. This is happening as we speak. Uh, to, to be... Uh, to be absolutely honest, there's no real uh, answer from the planning or the architectural or the design uh, realms to this type of situation. Let's move on to the optimistic side. It's not all bad news, uh, some of, although some of them are. Uh, when you look at some of the actions that the current actors are taking with regards to transportation, uh, you, will focus, you will see that uh, actually the, the, mod, the modus operandi of a few years ago, which was the elevated highways, which we know for a fact, they, uh, as uh, Enrique Peñalosa has clearly shown us, uh, they don't work, uh, they, they're jammed, they're clogged. Uh, they, it is a system that uh, I, I, even to this day has been repeated. This piece of infrastructure, which is called the Bicentennial Viaduct, uh, it's a Governor Peña Nieto mayor achievement. This was just opened a month ago. So this is actually, we're replicating, we're not learning from our mistakes. And yet, uh, the, it seems that this is the way to work. Even Mayor Ebrard, who has a, more, uh, a much more liberal and progressive agenda, uh, in a way he, developed, he, he uh, assigned more than 200, close to $250 million just to repave the inner circuit, uh, which is only uh, for private cars. On the other side of the spectrum, there, ha there has been a recent focus on some public transportation projects. Uh, some of them are the, sub the, the suburban train uh, to the northeast, I'm sorry, to the northwest, a new subway line, the first one in over 10 years, and the extension of the Metrobus, which is a BRT system. This is good news. Uh, unless everything stays on the desk, as, it, as some of these projects seem to be uh, uh, remaining. So, uh, whether, and, the, and the, issue, the whole issue of mobility should be taken, again, with a grain of salt. Where in, a, in a city that extends over 1,400 kilometers, is it about bringing the people to the city, or is it about bringing cityness to these communities? And that's, I think, a question that has not been really addressed. This is Mayor uh, Ebrard, actually, I believe it's Janet Sarikan, on the right on the recent conference of uh, Walk 21. So the mayor has a commitment to, to the different alternatives of uh, transportation. Uh, he has implemented a program of closing streets during the weekends for the use of bike, uh, and now he's replicating the program of the leasing, uh, the bicycle leasing uh, in many parts of the city. So there's a little bit of optimism with regards to the policy, but I should insist that these are all disjointed and fragmented action. Uh, 
maybe more, even more radical is the closing of Madero Street, which is one of the, the most important streets and the historic center that ha has now been closed completely to, uh, to uh, private transportation. When we talk about housing, this is the most emblematic housing project of the 1960s. Typical tabula rasa strategy, cleaning up a site. Uh, this is a, a project, uh, a fantastic and perverse project done by uh, Mario Pani, the most prominent architect of the 20th century in Mexico. But this, this type of housing policy has ceased into this other type of housing policy. Basically huge tracts of land in the periphery being developed. And on the other hand, the other 50% is this modality of informal city making. Two other uh, government-led strategies, and then I'll show very quickly five, uh, five projects. One of them is about retrofitting reforma. The axis of development of the 50s finally is being uh, rethought as a possible site for uh, major interventions. This is only private investment. We should keep into account. There's no real outspoken policy to, re to make this the, 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 the policy of the state. And uh, there's over 10 new buildings uh, which will be built over the next five years, including uh, Rogers and Legorreta new headquarters for BBVA. Two major parks, one of them Bicentennial Park by Mario Shernan and, uh, uh, and Ricardo Legorreta on the north, a former brownfield site, and then the new uh, Xochimilco Green City by 10 Arquitectos. Finally, and uh, I will go through this very, very quickly. Um, Maybe we have to think of retrofitting as a kind of new technique. If, uh, if uh, Le Corbusier's creative hand, legitimized uh, expertise hand uh, is one model, and Robert Moses' urban managerial uh, autocratic uh, model is the other one, maybe in the context of cities such as Istanbul, such as Mexico, retrofitting can be a much more meaningful way. Uh, retrofitting is, in a sense, post de facto urbanization. If Idelfonso Cerda imagined that there was uh, the Via and there was the Entrevia, and urbanization happened prior to occupation, when we have more than 60% of the city, and this is same, uh, the same with the uh, Jacon Luz here in Istanbul, uh, 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 creating out of informality, then we do have to imagine new techniques. And this is, again, not only, only happening in the poor neighborhoods, but actually in places like Santa Fe. Five very quick techniques, three projects in the historic center, one a brownfield, one in the periphery. In the historic center, we have to imagine to go beyond the idea of preservation. Historical preservation heritage is not enough to actually activate and retrofit the city. It is a center that has been losing population steadily for the last 50 years. A project we're working with ITDP and for the Metrobus operators with Guillermo Calderon is the idea of bringing in two new uh, BRTs, BRT lights into, in through the center. So in a sense, these images of uh, 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 congestioned uh, private cars going through the historic center may change into a different model of uh, BRT. Second project, which very much relates to these light architecture maneuvers, is turning an, uh, a, a, the market of 2 Abril in the forgotten corner of a historic center the kind of historic center no one wants to venture or talk about, and transforming this into a pedestrian plaza where only minor interventions such as activating a roof terrace, changing the stained glass, and, and working to make this a real public space could be a way to retrofit the city. And finally, the Spanish Cultural Center expansion, the result of a winning competition uh, that along with Javier Sanchez we won on a former site uh, an abandoned site that after the earthquakes of 85 remained an empty site as there are many in the historic center. And this complex project has to do with negotiating with the many forces that uh, deal with the historic center, whether it is the, the preservationists, the clients, the city, the federal government. This is a project that, that it's the first new building uh, to be built in the historic center in more than 25 years. I think this is relevant in the context of uh, getting beyond preservation. And we managed to do a building which has two sub-basements. It has a, an archeological um, site on the, on, the, on the foundations, and it has uh, six stories uh, above ground. Uh, these are some of the images. This is the, the archeological site just next to the Templo Mayor. This will be finished in the next uh, three months. Uh, 
a quick break uh, uh, which has to do with retrofitting brownfield sites. As all major cities, uh, there are still huge tracts of land. One of these are all sites owned by private investors. So again, similar to uh, what Case was mentioning earlier, we have to negotiate and make the plans. This is a, a collaboration between our firm and Arup from London. And we're working at both ends, convincing the clients of the virtues of the virtues of getting beyond the ordinary real estate development, and we're convincing the, the authorities that in order to change the model of development, we have to change the protocols of planning, the protocols of, uh, of uh, density, the protocols of public and private. And we're doing a lot of uh, transformation when it comes to typologies. And finally, the, the last project, which has to do with the peripheries, the new BRT for Nesa Chimalhuacan. Nesa is the largest informal settlement in Mexico City and all Latin America. Over one and a half million people live there. And this new 18 kilometer long uh, BRT or Metrobus will connect and, uh, and serve uh, for more than 500,000 people uh, when it gets, goes into operation sometime next year. In a sense, Nesa is almost all right. And the question of bringing this kind of infrastructure to the city and to expand the notion of infrastructure just beyond, beyond uh, bus mobility and bringing a, a, a cycleway and bringing changes in land use is what we think is relevant about this project. Finally, and it has to do with something that uh, Richard Sennett has been mentioning uh, throughout these last couple of days. Maybe we have to think that the architect can regain a, a new role or an old role as a public intellectual. I insist on the public aspect of it. We tend to think that it's about experts versus citizens, and obviously this model is outdated. But in a sense, it becomes more active, especially in the context of Mexico. It's only a, a 700-year-old city. It's only a 20-year-old democracy. Only through, a better city, citizens, only through a better city can we actually construct better citizenship. Thank you very much.